Hello, you are listening to The Natural Healing Show, your global feel-good radio for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. Now, our guest today is Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt. And through the miracles of modern technology, we are speaking to Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt through uh, technology. And he lives in Nanital Himalayas in India at the foot of the Himalayan mountains. Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt is the author of not just one, but 12 books. I've only published 10 books. And he is the founder of Vajra Mukti Yoga. You can find out more about Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt at his website, which is www.ulslab.blogspot.com. Welcome, Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt. Hello. Hi, hi, Catherine. How are you? It's I'm great to be here with you. Great. Now, Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt, you are the founder of Vajra Mukti Yoga. What exactly is Vajra Mukti Yoga? Catherine, the uh, short meaning of Vajra Mukti Yoga is from action to liberation. It is a combination of various kind of yogas, Nata Yoga, Lai Yoga, Kriya Yoga, Raja Yoga, Hatha Yoga, and principle of various martial arts and meditations. That's wonderful. Now, before we started our recording, Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt and I, we were talking about how long we've taught yoga. I've taught yoga for only 25 years. Dr. Chandra Baker Bhatt has taught yoga for over 20 years, but he started practicing yoga in his childhood. Now, Dr. Chandra Shaker Bhatt, you had an experience as a child which saved your life, and that became one of the founding stones of Vajra Mukti Yoga. Would you share for our audience what happened? Sure, Catherine. When I was a kid, one of my uh, relatives uh, feeded me wrongly in the food, and uh, by which I had an intensive pain in my stomach. And I was at football ground that time. So one guy from south part of India, he told me to do Paschimottanasana, a kind of forward bending pose. Okay, and, and for, really, our, for our audience, Paschimottanasana is a seated forward fold. We are sitting on the ground and your legs extended out in front of you and you hinge forward from the hips. Most people do this pose incorrectly because they round their lower back. So continue. I just wanted to share that for our audience. Right, right. And I remained there in that pose for 90 minutes and that which cured, slowly cured my stomach and I could walk after that slowly to my house back, which was a cornerstone from where I thought of making a healing art, Vajramukti. And also when I was studying in school on uh, fifth standard, I had uh, a lesson which was talking about the fighting between gods and demons. So the gods were finding it difficult to fight with demons. They went to a rishi who was meditating on Vajrasana for many years. Now, when you meditate on Vajrasana, your genitro, uri genitri system becomes very, very highly evolved and uh, 10th cranial nerve, which is vagus nerve, it comes into action. So this 
where Siddhartha's body was very, very powerful. The gods requested him what they should do. Rishi Dariji told them, I will utter Om and leave my body. And then you can make a weapon out of my body, which will be known as Vajra and demons will be destroyed. And they did so and demons were destroyed. From that story I, and my own experiences, which saved my life, I happened to coin this term Vajramukti Yoga and many other philosophies which when I grew up and studied with different masters and I went on adding to my knowledge of Vajramukti Yoga. With respect to all different healing arts around the world in harmony. Now, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt has a PhD in alternative medicine. And one of the things that I really love here at the Natural Healing Show is that we're able to speak, again, through the miracles of modern technology with experts in natural healing from all over the world. Now, when you got your PhD in alternative medicine, where exactly did you study and what modalities did you study included in that, in that degree? Actually, I uh, wrote my works and uh, it was the International World Meeting of Alternative Medicine at Mumbai. And uh, they took my works and I was teaching there. I was keeping a workshop there, a free workshop for healing people. And they told me to apply at uh, Calcutta and they came, they took my things and that's how they gave me a doctorate on the subject. Yeah, so you, you earned yours through experience, <laughs> right. That's right? That's right. And a lot of us who are masters at natural healing, we've just been practicing and studying for years. I'm 60 years old and I've been doing this full time for 26 years. Now let's go back to Vajra Mukti Yoga. When a person, uh, first of all, where do, you, where do you have to go to learn Vajra Mukti Yoga? Do we have to go to the Himalayas to study with you? Yeah, you I have put, uh, I have made a YouTube channel. In fact, I have put around more than 300 videos. Or my videos may not be of a very high definition because uh, with uh, uh, my little bit of paraphernalia, I'm trying to work it out and giving to the people my knowledge. So everybody, in the world is benefited through this channel. There are more than 300 videos I have put so that you can see those videos and get benefited by them and the books I have uh, produced. And also uh, anybody can ask me, I, I can give a free advice, all free to anyone in the world. Now, so if we wanted to watch your videos on Vajra Mukti Yoga, what is your YouTube channel? Uh, that is uh, www.youtube.com slash c slash dr chandra c h a n d r a s k e e k h a r right and i'm going to repeat that back for our audience so you can find dr chandra shekhar bot on YouTube and his name is spelled C-H-A-N-D-R-A-S-H-E-K-H-A-R-B-H-A-T-T. -T. Now, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, you know, as you know, yoga is practiced all over the world. What is especially unique about Vajra Mukti Yoga compared to other forms of yoga? Yeah, actually, uh... Vajramukti Yoga has martial arts, principles of martial arts in it. Now, when you study different martial arts, all martial arts have got the healing systems in their art. What they do is, uh, practically if you see, at the Dantian reason or lower belly. Mm -hmm. At the Dantian, uh, yes. Yeah, the lower belly which uh, in Indian mythology is believed as a kundalini power at Cossex. The serpent kundalini power remains there, dormant. So the, you, the, it's like a valve there. When you uh, release the 
energy from that wall, energy will go to downward parts of your extremities and then the upward parts of your extremities. Now, through your mind, you control that, like how you control a wall and the water rushes to your body. And with due experiences, you can control it, the energy to the parts which you want to heal. The difference, what we do in Vajramukti Yoga is we respect and use this also, but we believe that uh, medulla oblongata as main thing. Okay, because and that's the medulla believe, oblongata in the, the part of the brain, yes. Yeah, uh, medulla oblongata is a, a creation of Adi Sakti, Divine Mother. That's what we believe. And uh, we take the energy from cosmos through medulla oblongata. Uh, you see the yogis have long hairs on the part of medulla oblongata because through the help of hair also you can take energy from cosmos through medulla oblongata and then direct that energy through in between the from the place in between your eyebrows to the part which you want to heal. So this is little different from the all other different martial arts, which is totally concentrated on Tantain. Other important aspect of Vajramukti is, uh, we believe that uh, individual which you are going to heal or help has his energy in his being. And when we put our energy into his being, there is a kind of violence there. So if suppose we are curing or helping a person and due to his past imprints of past uh, lives in his consciousness and his whole being, our energy is uh, going as a violence to his energy. So we believe that we, he should take help from some other healing master. Like say, and internationally, there are many healing masters. Like for example, if you, you can take a Rolfing method, which was created by Ida Rolf. She was a major in chemistry and then she studied yogic movements and then she made her art of Rolfing. So suppose we are curing a person by Vajramukti way and our energy is going not in harmony, it's like in, we are, it's a violent thing happening. So we can help that person through some other healer. So there, in these two philosophies, Vajramukti is unique. But we respect all other arts because they are all unique. Anybody helping a humanity is the greatest thing in this earth. We have to grow. We have to, we have to help each other to know thyself. Right. Now, for our audience, you know, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt was talking about the medulla oblongata. So you all may go, what is that? Well, your medulla oblongata, <laughs> say that really fast. Your medulla oblongata is part of your brain stem. So your brain stem, you know, is part of your reptilian brain. So it's, you know, your deep, deep programming. So back to you, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt. How did you get interested in directing energy, directing healing energy from the medulla oblongata as opposed to your our Don Chen, which is that lower belly area that you talked about that you know most martial arts Tai Chi Qi Gong focuses on? Actually, my father was a, a, a religious teacher and a pandit. So he used to recite Divine Mother's hymns. Mm. And uh, he used to practice uh, uh, this, and he was he told me about medulla oblongata through his studies with his masters. He believed that uh, this is a creation of Adi Shakti. Uh, Adi Shakti means uh, divine mother. So my father had by hearted all the slokas, hymns of divine mother. Oh, I got this from my father this uh, about uh, medulla oblongata and which I entwined with a martial artist uh, philosophy of right. Tantin. 
And, and for our audience, you know, uh, those of us who practice yoga, we've, we're familiar with the seven major chakras, you know, one through seven. And then those of us who practice Qigong and Tai Chi, and I've, I've taught yoga now for 25 years. I've taught Qigong roughly about 20 years. And in Qigong and Tai Chi, we focus on building the Qi, the healing energy in lower Dan Chen, which is, you know, below your belly button, middle Dan Chen, which is around your heart area, and your upper Dan Chen. And my understanding is your, the, the energy around your head, around your upper Dan Chen, that's actually your, your wisdom Qi, your spiritual Qi. So by working on the medulla oblongata that Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt is talking about, you're building this chi, this wisdom chi. And um, so is this a pathway for enlightenment? Yeah, that is right. Uh, but uh, I will add some more knowledge to it. Um, Please. You see, uh, the six chakras, the seventh as a crown, uh, if you, I've given this on my book, Who Am I? And also on Vajramukti Yoga, these seven chakras are actually the reflection of the chakras higher. And that second higher state of chakra is the reflection of another state. So the seven chakras which yogis practice is the third reflections of the reality. Now this I read only on the works of Kabir. The, the work, the book, it is known as Anurag Sagar of Kabir. The meaning of Anurag Sagar is ocean of love. Mm. And that is the, the whole uh, work of Anurag Sagar. The, it is the talk between uh, Kabir's disciple Dharamdas and Kabir on the love, ocean of love. So in that he explains that the chakras, seven chakras, which yogi practice, it is a third reflection of the real state. And uh, like initially, we practice on the light, all yogis. But actually, the end, pro end thing is a sound. They believe Kabir's philosophy. I, I respect all the philosophies, no denying the respect of other philosophies. But this is what knowledge which I have gained so I'm sharing with you also. Right. Now, we started and we talked about how Vajra Mukti Yoga is used for healing. And, you know, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt and I have many things in common. We're both authors and we both use yoga for healing. And one of my books, The Difference of, Between Pain and Suffering, I have a whole appendix with the 41 yoga exercises that I use most often to help people get out of pain. And there's photographs and, and directions. So Dr. Chandra, Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, when you use Vajra Mukti Yoga for healing, what sort of pain, suffering, or conditions is Vajra Mukti Yoga especially helpful for healing? Yeah, Vashyamukti Yoga actually will rejuvenate the system because it is uh, not conditioning, it is beyond conditioning. Vashyamukti Yoga, as I said, it is uh, a non-violent art of healing. We suppose we, uh, our, our student knows something which he wants to share with us, we will learn from him also. Because he has, he in his uh, consciousness, the imprints from the past. Maybe our imprints, our consciousness is becoming a violence to his imprints. Like, for example, if I take him, somebody to a hypnotic state, now I think that I'm curing him, but actually I'm overpowering and controlling him. So if that is the case, I should learn from him and leave that and send him to some other healer who can help me better than me. So Vajramukti is, uh, will rejuvenate him and help him in a friendly manner that we are all one and we have to help each other. I'm nobody great. I'm same like other, any other healer. 
Right. So if I could paraphrase what you're saying, it's a method for cultivating and increasing your own chi. Is that correct? Perfect. Correct. Yes. And you know, to me, chi, life energy, prana, whatever you'd like to call it, is so crucial. Whenever I do a medical intuitive reading, I the first thing that I literally look at is a person's chi level. And you know, this is so crucial because the higher your chi, the faster you can heal. And the way the analogy that I give is if you have a million dollars in in the bank, and you made a mistake, it'd be like, well, oh, well, too bad. But if you have only $100 in the bank or $10 in a bank and you make a mistake, then you can really be in trouble. And all disease, all illness is simply slowed down vibration and healing happens when you lift your vibration. So by increasing your personal chi and cultivating your chi through practices like Vajra Mukti Yoga and the many other practices that we discuss here at the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio, you literally lift yourself out of disease and illness, right? You're perfectly right. Now, now Dr. Chandra Shekhar Pat, how important do you think Chi Prana healing energy is? How important is it, do you think, that we have some sort of personal practice to cultivate our own chi. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Vajramukti Yoga, I teach to my students to make their own Vajramukti Yoga. They should develop their own personal chi, own personal ways, because every individual is different. Uh, he's a part, undivided part of the whole, but yet he has his own way. So he must develop his own chi. Like if, if you are a Tai Chi practitioner, it's very good, you know. You, as a Tai Chi, you can add from other people also. All other healers are great. All of the styles are great, like Rolfing of Ida Rolf or a lay system of Dub Lay or all other uh, artists or healers. They're all great artists, all healers, working for humanity. To grow the humanity, it's really great work, really great. Right. And, you know, when people receive energy healing, so for example, if you went to a Reiki master or a craniosacral therapist, you would lie on a table and a healer would emit chi into your body and put healing energy into your being. And by doing that, it shifts the frequency of illness and disease and you naturally heal yourself. Now, going back to Vajra Mukti Yoga, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, if someone were to practice Vajra Mukti Yoga, what would we see? Are they practicing postures? Are they practicing breath work? Are they practicing meditation or all of the above? Yeah, actually, uh, first we start from mudra. Uh, because practicing mudra improves your memory retentive power. And when you, you entwine uh, with mudra, the movement, uh, easy movement of martial arts, and with that you move in nation of your breath. So at anyone at any age can be helped to heal, cure, and apart from that he can make his own understanding grow and he can make his own style of chi. Okay, Ajumi. now for, for our audience, Okay, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt is talking about mudras. So mudras are hand gestures. And right. in my book, The Little Book of Breath Work, I talk about breathing exercises, uh, different breathing exercises all coming from yoga. I talk about affirmations, and I talk about hand mudras. And so you can learn 16 very powerful hand mudras from my book, The Little Book of Breath Work. So, and some, some of the hand mudras, we, we're familiar with this, we're familiar th with this, but there's many others. And the reason they work is that your acupuncture meridians either begin or end in your hands and your feet. So by changing the configuration of your hands, you're literally shifting the way that chi flows through your entire being. And the way that I teach it in the little book of breath work is you combine um, 
affirmations, which you say in your mind, you know, another word for that is a mantra, right? Like right. nothing comes in, nothing comes out except unconditional love. I'm a channel for divine love and grace. Those are mantras, affirmations. And you combine the hand mudras and breathing exercises. So Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, are there any particular hand mudras that are very frequently practiced in Vajra Mukti Yoga? Yeah, Cassian, there is one particular hand mudra I will try to show you is uh, known as Kao Mudra. Okay, it's can, called Kao Mudra. Yeah, okay. can you see me? Okay, and for our audience that can't see, but listen, if you'll describe how you do this, it's Kao Mudra, right? Yeah. yeah, you can touching the alternate fingers. Okay, so we making, touch our, so we bring the two the, the two hands together and touch yes. our fingers. Okay, and then yeah. you touch your alternate fingers uh, so that you touch the sinus points on the uh, top portion of your fingers, which will uh, uh, improve your power of memory retention. Okay. So that's a very common mudra that's practiced. Are there any other mudras that pr are practiced in Vajra Mukti Yoga? Yeah, there are many mudras. One, the index, you're touching the back of the index finger, and there are many, but this one is, uh, I'm giving it for all because this, I've seen, I've worked with the students also. I had a student who was getting 70% marks and he wanted to increase it to 90%. I made him do this mudra with meditation and he got 90%. He's today at New York. He's a, he's a vice president on Goldman Sachs company at New York. Wow. Very, very wonderful story. And again, if you go to the little book of breath work by Catherine Kerrigan, I um, teach 16 different mudras in that book. Um, here's another one, that, uh, one of my favorites, it's Uttara Bodhi Mudra. So you interlace the fingers of, of both hands and then you bring your pointer fingers together like a steeple. So that first finger right behind your thumb. And this is a mudra that you use for enlightenment when you want to lift your vibration, right? And there's many, many others that you can learn. And, you know, here in the West, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, you know, many of us yogis were familiar with the physical postures of yoga, and then we're beginning to learn about the power of breath work. But the hand mudras are not as well known. Um, and that's part of why I wrote the little book of breath work to teach how I integrate hand mudras, breathing exercises, and positive thoughts. Why do you believe that hand mudras are so powerful? Yeah, it does not believe it's a practice. I myself had faced a problem on me. And when I practiced this mudra, I was cured. Once at Facebook, one lady uh, on my page, doctor page, she asked me, she was facing a problem of bloating stomach. Mm -hmm. I told her about mudra also, and I told her about eating also. She was also benefited. When I was benefited, anybody else was benefited. So it's a practical uh, help uh, from these mudras. Anybody can make use of it. And yes. You've done a great job by writing a book. Yes. And, you know, the thing about um, the hand mudras is many people will say, oh, I'm not flexible, I can't touch my toes, and they're put off by even starting yoga and the, the practices of the po physical postures. Even though Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt and I, I'm sure would agree that yoga is available to all bodies, ages, and sizes, and it's a matter of starting where you're at and learning right. what your body can do. However, right. the hand mudras you don't have to be a bendy person. <laughs> you can just use your hands, right? Now, another mudra that is in my book is Anjali Mudra. And that's the one, it's basically prayer position, where you bring all the palms of your hands together at your heart, Anjali Mudra. And, you know, that's about accessing div divinity. So by changing your hand position, 
you're literally changing the frequency of energy in your body and you can consciously direct the chi for healing so depending on you know what you are wanting to achieve a mudra that i'm frequently recommending for people who are emotionally stressed is mushti mudra so if you bring your hands and this one you do with uh with in each hand you take your thumb in between your middle finger and your ring finger so the thumb goes in between your middle finger and your ring finger on each hand and then you bring the other hand the other fingers on top and mushti mudra is helpful when you've got a lot of pent-up emotions and you're wanting to move the energy and release all that energy of all those pent-up emotions so so going back to vajra mukti yoga so you teach then the science of mudras correct correct right now um if someone would practice vajra mukti yoga how would he or she benefit from the practice yeah vajra, anybody practicing vajra mukti yoga will increase his power of energy chi and his understanding towards the universality of the spirit will increase he will heal himself and he will uh, he can make his own vajra mukti and increase his chi and help others to increase his chi help others to get away from different problems of life understand living and understand whole the cosmos as one family that's a great answer and you know um energy again is so important that again i i mentioned that whenever i do a medical intuitive reading that's the first thing that i look at and what i would say is here in western society the number one complaint of every single one of my new clients is fatigue so it's low it's low low g right <laughs> not enough energy and you know here dr you know chandra shekhar bad and i we're of advanced years i'm 60 how old are you dr chandra shekhar bad i'm 50, 50. you're 50 oh you youngster you <laughs> i'm 60 but we have really good energy but part of it is that we cultivate our chi right so one of my books unlimited energy now talks about how you can build your personal chi on every level physical energetic emotional mental and spiritual but part of that is to have some kind of practice where you build your own chi and to realize that that's so crucial and especially those of us who are healers you know the the it's a law of physics that energy always goes from highest to lowest vibration so if you practice natural healing if you are a healer and you don't have some way of building your personal chi sooner or later they're going to be in trouble this would be like standing on the street corner and handing out candy if you kept handing out candy and didn't get any for yourself sooner or later you're going to not have any for you right correct okay so when you practice vajra mukti yoga how do you practice you practice in the morning do you practice in the evening do you sit on a yoga mat do you sit on a futon what do you do no i'm not into any condition as yoga mat for me uh, personally i morning i get up at three o'clock and i sit for meditation till uh, uh, two and a half hours to three hours you you beat me i wake up in the morning and when i open my eyes i start praying and meditating but i don't do two and a half hours <laughs> yeah i love to do for uh, that time then uh, again i practice the movements uh, that is at evening i practice the movements of vajra mukti like uh, like like uh, you see the tai chi movements yes. or slow movements same way i practice that at evening the breathing entwining with breathing and mudras all that right so you practice breath work hand mudras and physical postures in the evenings and how Correct. how much time do you spend in the evening practicing the physical postures uh maybe a hour or two hours one or two hours okay yeah. <laughs> so no wonder you have such wonderful energy okay yeah. now 
Right. You, you have a story about a businessman who was having trouble breathing and how he was cured by Vajra, Vajra Mukti. Would you share that uh, story with our audience? Yeah, sure. Uh, there was a businessman, uh, he na his name in short, I will say VK. Uh, he uh, went to America and uh, UK to many FRCS doctors. He was failing his breath. Somehow he came in contact with me and nobody could understand what was happening to him. Doctors were saying that uh, he will live for a very short time. But when I met him, uh, I told him, no, this is not that problem what you're thinking of your heart. This is something uh, I feel that uh, some evil has come to you for from some reason unknown to me, you only know. He was a businessman and there were many rivals of his. And he used to go to the parties and drink there. So in the, his drink, somebody had put something which was uh, creating his uh, all the bodies, the koshas, you know, uh, bad effect, and it was happening to him. Since I had also passed through this state once of failing the breath, so I could understand his problem. So I made him aware how the breathing process happens. And I made him aware about the lower belly breathing. And then I told him to meditate and try to remove this negative himself. I taught him the way of meditation so that if uh, I will not uh, do a direct healing from my side, I want him to increase his energies and heal himself. And the posters, I, I made easy posters of yoga so he can do it. And when he was not understanding a belly breathing, so for that I put pressure, outward pressure from my side to, for him to understand a belly breathing, lower abdominal breathing. So that affected, I thought I had to sit for 10 sessions with him, but within three sessions he was all right. And he was, I, but I told him don't, uh, uh, go for late night parties and if you go uh, drink take your own bottle and drink right don't see you be careful like yeah now dr chandra shekhar you said many things that are really important for our audience so one of the things that you talked about was the koshas and you know my work as a medical intuitive healer is very informed by my practice, my regular practice of yoga, and at age of 60, I still teach yoga about five times a week. So the koshas, what are they? They're your physical body, you know what that is. Um, yeah. The energy body, which includes the chakras, the acupuncture system, and your breath. The energy body controls the physical body. Then there's your, your emotional body. Those are all your feelings. Then there's right. your mind. Okay, your thoughts and belief, and then your soul, which is actually who you are. Your soul controls your mind, your mind controls your emotions, your emotions control your energy, and your energy body includes, uh, controls the physical. So when we work in the energy body, um, in the pranamaya kosha is what it's called in yoga, literally right. the body of energy. When you work in the energy body, that can actually heal the physical body. And Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt also talked about belly breathing. And here's what I tell my yoga students. If you're not breathing into your belly, you're stuck in the sympathetic nervous system. And why is this so important? You have two sides of your nervous system, the sympathetic side and the parasympathetic side. The sympathetic side is the side that is stressed, okay? And the parasympathetic side is the side of the body that, the side of the nervous system that allows you to relax. Now, when you're healthy, you're supposed to go between your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. However, many people are stuck in the sympathetic nervous system. And you can actually, you know, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, I'm sure we could walk through any yoga class and identify 
who's stuck in the sympathetic nervous system simply through their breath, right? right. Yes. And Good. so by breathing into your belly, you're accessing the parasympathetic nervous system, which allows your whole body to relax. And when you're healthy and switching back and forth between sympathetic and parasympathetic, then your body can naturally heal yourself. And, you know, since we're talking about breathing and immune system, I wanted to show our audience and teach our audience another mudra from my book, The Little Book of Breathwork, and this is Linga Mudra. And this is a um, hand mudra that will boost your immune system and heal your lungs. So what you're going to do is you're going to interlace all your fingers, okay? So take both hands, interlace all your fingers, and then bring the pointer finger of one hand up and then the opposite hand, the thumb and the pointing finger sort of encircle that extended finger. And by holding that hand mudra, you're activating the lung meridian and you're boosting your immune system. So again, even if you're not a bendy person, by learning the hand mudras and the science of mudra, you can heal yourself anytime, anywhere. You know, I like mudras because you know, a lot of times during the day, you may be waiting in line. You're in line at the grocery, you're in line at the doctor, you're in line to take the bus or the subway. Well, you can do breathing exercises in hand mudras anytime, anywhere. And by doing that, you're directing the chi. Now, um, so Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, how many... You talked about martial arts being involved in Vajra Mukti Yoga. How does Vajra Mukti Yoga involve or include martial arts? As I said, that Vajra Mukti Yoga is a condense of uh, different yogas, same way the principles of all the martial arts are condensed in Vajra Mukti Yoga. Like, take an example, like if you see uh, karate, they have the Sanchin form where they practice breathing. Now, if you see Tai Chi, they have the Qi Gongs. Now, the same thing is there in Wing Chun Kung Fu. You see the Qi Gong, they practice. All different martial arts have got that. Principally, the, if you take the principle of all the martial arts, it, they have their own healing ways. So in Vajra Mukti, the only difference, as I told you, we concentrate on medulla oblongata, which had a link from my father, which I learned about Divine Mother's hymns. Uh, can I tell, I'll tell you one incident of my father. Oh, please. My father, my father was a, a pundit, a, a spiritual teacher. So there was a lady who was uh, affected by a spirit. So when the, she was affected by a spirit, she used to shout, she used to say her whole, house was unhappy and what she her husband was my father's friend so my uh, father went to their house and uh, he took the book of divine mother and he chanted those uh, hymns slokas of divine mother and my father said that all of a sudden that lady got up and took shook my the uh, collar of my father and the from her voice was manly voice coming and she said i will not leave this lady because she uh, urinated on my coffin but my father slapped her and made her sit down and then he completed his whole text of divine mother and uh, that lady was calm after that after that that spirit left that lady now those the hymns uh, of Divine Mother, a uh, few lines, can I say? Absolutely. Please, for our audience, we would love to hear some of the Divine Mother's hymns, that, are especially yeah. those that are beneficial for healing. Yeah, it is Om Yadguyam Paramam Loke Sarvaraksha Kramnanam Jannakasyat Chidakhyatam Tanme Bruhitutama Asti Guya Tamam Vipra Sarva Bhuto Pakarakam Devyas to Kaucham Punnim Tachun Sumahamane Atom Sayala Putrija Dutiyam Ramacharani Dutiyam Chandragan Teti Kushman Deti Chaturukam 
पंचम स्कंदमातेति सष्टमम काप्याय नीति चो सप्तमम काल रात्रि चो महागौरी ति चाष्टम नवमम सिद्धि रात्रि चो नो दुर्गा हा प्रकीर्ति दा हा दिस वाज टॉट टू बी माय फादर Oh, that's so beautiful. And again, for our audience, you know, once you understand that all illness is slow down vibration and healing happens in, you know, by lifting your vibration, by putting yourself in the frequency of divine mantras, you shift your frequency. My personal mantra is the Lord's Prayer. I say that so many times during the day, I don't even, can't even count. Other people use the Gayatri Mantra, which is another one. And these hymns to Divine uh, Mother that Dr. Chandra Shekhar bought, his father taught him. So by including mantras, or even some of the simple affirmations that I teach in my book, The Little Book of Breath Work, you're shifting your frequency, you're making your mind think positive thoughts, and you're putting yourself in this healing vibration, right? So Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, the founder of Vajra Mukti Yoga, any final thoughts for our audience? You should practice healing any art uh, like or Alexandra technique or Skida Rolf or Felre, Moss, Judo practitioner, Moss way, any way you should do and you should teach others and help others for free so we can uplift mankind right what a powerful message you've been listening to the natural healing show for uk health radio your global feel-good radio this is katherine kerrick and medical intuitive healer and amazon number one best-selling author you can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com while you're there definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how to heal yourself naturally. Now, through the miracles of modern technology, we have been speaking to Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt, who lives in Nanital, in the Himalayas, in the foothills of the Himalayas in India, the founder of Vajra Mukti Yoga. And you can find out more about Dr. Chandra Shekhar Bhatt and his 12 books and his wonderful work at his website www.ulslab.blogspot.com. And remember, Dr. Chandra Shekhar Pat and I both encourage you to develop some form of personal practice to build and cultivate your own chi. And when you have great energy, you naturally heal yourself. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.